property. Is there a trend? Yes, there is a trend. You compare with the 1960s or, or early 70s, around 100 disasters per year. And now, actually, we're, we're now, we're, we're a little late in the information from 29. We're now close to 500 per year. So it's quadrupling or, 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 or a five times increase because more people in the world live more exposed to more extreme weather. There is, this is earthquakes from 1980 up to, to today. There is a slight increase in the number of earthquake disasters. Why? Because more people live in, in earthquake prone areas. Mother of Earth shakes like she has done for millions of years. There's no increase in the number of shakes, quakes. There's more people. But look at floods or cyclones. It's racing much more strongly because there is more extreme weather. There's no doubt about it. So I just came this morning from the United States. I followed as an observer the American presidential election. And it's very interesting that there is not one single person that mentions climate change that I and many with me in international work and certainly all scientists say is the biggest generational challenge we have. Those who really are active in political uh, commercials are the coal industry. The coal industry wants to have energy voters to vote for more use of coal, which is the most polluting way of energy, and use coal more in North America. Now, <coughs> however, um, we, ha we now see that we are making prog progress as a CPD proofs in prevention and preparedness. In 2005, I happened to preside over, on behalf of the United Nations, the, um, the uh, conference in Kobe, in Hyogo, in Japan, which was a conference that really created the international framework for disaster prevention and, and uh, preparedness. Emperor Hirohito was present, 2,000 delegates from 168 countries, 600 journalists, I remember it well, it was just after the Indian Ocean tsunami. And since then, lots of countries have made progress in disaster prepa preparedness and, and, and uh, prevention. And, and here's, uh, here's an interesting graph. Let's take the good news first. We're saving lives. Huh? Look at this is the 19. These are the, this is the 1950s, and these are um, uh, uh, millions of casualties per decade. And the blue is uh, climate, and the red is earthquakes and tsunamis. 55 to 65, 65 to 75, 75 to 85, 85 to 95. And this is up to 2005. We're saving lives. We're saving lives even though the number of disasters are going through the roof. However, however, we're losing more and more resources, including livelihoods. I don't, I don't necessarily care that a lot of insurance companies have problems. But it is a problem that the poorest nations are kept in poverty in part because they have these recurrent national disasters and natural disasters that take so much of their resources. That is why we need better decision making 
on the basis of better information. It really is a ready, set, go um, kind of a, of a thing. I saw that as the emergency relief coordinator. The ready is the seasonal forecast. It leads to contingency plans and early warning sis and, 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 and early warnings. I mean, a seasonal forecast could be <laughs> no rain in the next six months, which means a drought. It could be perhaps the third seasonal forecast for, of drought in a row. But it could also be a seasonal forecast to say all looks as if it's going to be a horrible uh, typhoon season. The mid-range foresight is the, really the set one. It's where we confirm the seasonal for, for forecast and where you mobilize the assessment team. You do the local preparation. And then the go is when you see that the, the storm or the hurricane or, or whatever is really coming. And that may lead to instruction to communities to evacuate if needed. I mentioned water. I should speed up a little bit so we can have time to, <laughs> to, to discuss. I mean, um, water will be the thing that most of the meg that, that will most affect the mega cities on Earth. Maybe not Bangkok, which seems to have a lot of rain, but the majority of the mega cities of the world, uh, uh, above 10 million people, of which there are more and more are facing enormous, catastrophic water shortages in the future. So information, climate services are very important to guide the work of water managers. Or <laughs> to avoid the worst consequences of drought. This is China, which has systematic, continuous forecasting of droughts down to regional and local levels. But, it, but also in the area of health, there are benefits. Look at this. The malaria mosquito <laughs> is a consequence of rain. It's, it's also a consequence of lack of investment in eliminating malaria. But here's the, here's the expected number of malaria uh, cases, and here's the actual number of malaria cases. So the prediction which was made on a seasonal forecast of rain could predict to uh, almost on the day and on the number of people that would be affected by malaria in a very uh, d d um, definite period in Burundi. 2001. Or this map from Africa where they predict meningitis, which is a consequence of certain winds that spread meningitis. Now, we are doing now, as part of this climate services uh, program, case studies in north, south, east, west to get best practices and also uncover the uh, worst challenges. So, so you will see a lot of countries, including countries in the region, Thailand, Indonesia, India, among them, who will, who, where, where, we, where, where we see what is done, with what effect, what can we learn. And to conclude, Yeah, I was trying to convey that I think climate change is our, it's our generational challenge. We're trying to construct a climate change mitigation building as 190 sovereign states, and it is not going well. It is not going well. And there are many reasons for that. And it's not just one group of countries that fail. Many groups of countries fail 
to cooperate well. Um, the, 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 the consequences will be felt all over the world. Since mitigate, I mean, we're, we're just continuing to dump garbage out in the atmosphere. And more and more countries are doing it. It's not just us who are worst for the longest period of time in the, in the northwest. Now it's more and more and more countries doing it. One of the reasons there was sort of a bit of a leveling off was not that we were becoming better as humankind or our decision makers had, were, were playing more leadership and they had more of a mandate for us as electorates. It was because there was economic downturn so it, we didn't burn as much as we did or consume as much as we did. <coughs> However, at least one thing could be done as we wait for more leadership, we wait for more realism. And that is that we could have the most vulnerable to ha be able to defend themselves better. And if we're not uh, able to, to get the one to two billion poorest and these 65 countries that are really, really unprepared, if we don't lift them up to more preparedness, we will see again an increasing number of lives lost to natural disasters, and we will see more and more countries locked in terrible poverty. So that's what's at stake. And Global Climate Services is, as I said, one small contribution to that, to, to more climate justice. And more information is available if we, you go to the World Meteorological Organization's web pages and you look for GFCS, Global Framework for Climate Services. And I thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. England, for the very insightful lectures. Now, I'll let you actually open the floor out for any kind of questions you may have for Dr. England. We have roughly maybe 10 minutes around time for question and answering. Uh, we have a mic ready in the middle of the room. If you'd like to ask any question, please feel, feel free to step forward. Uh, before that, I would like to announce to the uh, conference also that uh, the representative from 15 different countries uh, most of them in the area of climate change uh, assignment, uh, ranging from Afghanistan, uh, Indonesia, Sri Lanka, Vietnam, are all here. So the input from the different nations could be very much appreciated. And uh, for the question, uh, I think not only, not only us that can uh, respond to you, but the resource person from the med department on the floor also could uh, supplementing what Dr. England was mentioning. <coughs> microphone back there on the bar. Yeah, the Sorry. microphone is actually back on the uh, on the steps. As Bill was mentioning, we have the representative from UNSCAP, UNDP, uh, UNICEF. Yes, UNICEF and others as well. Yeah. Or we can actually wait for the panel discussion afterwards. Uh, so now I'd like to ask, uh, her Excellency, uh, Mrs. Norgat, the uh, Norwegian ambassador to Thailand, to present a small token of appreciation. Yeah. Thank you. No, let me say a few words. Oh, it's a great pleasure for me to, uh, as a fellow countryman, to be here and to, to thank you for what I thought was a very both inspiring and, uh, of course, also a scary presentation of, of uh, uh, the consequences of climate change and, and, and the challenges the world is facing when it comes to increasing populations and, and um, weather change. 
I'm, I'm personally also uh, passionate about the issue of climate change and I'm really happy to, to have someone who can present the issue in, um, in a very convincing way. And uh, I'm very pleased that there are so many people here and hopefully many journalists who will write about the issue but, and also about the um, possibilities because I think it's very easy to become very gloomy and depressed when you, when you, you look at the graphs and, and the figures. But, uh, but the fact is that there's actually a lot that can be done. There is a lot of technology, there is a lot of knowledge what can be done. And, and what is lacking is often political will and, and, um, and engagement from, from everyone. So um, I hope everyone will write about the most important issue of today, climate change. And, um, and uh, by these few words, I'd like to thank you and give you this beautiful gift from ADPC. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. Now we'd like to ask for ten, everybody to take a 10 minutes break. Uh, we have our snacks ready in the back. We feel well to, uh, welcome to them. And we'll have to settle the panel discussion from. So we'll be back in 10 minutes. Thank you very much.